Hi, it's Richard here from the OPA Hub website with the third in our What's New in the May 2017 edition of Oracle Policy Automation video series. In the previous video, we discussed the Oracle Policy Automation extension, the ad extension uh, ca capability, which let us now create JavaScript extensions. The last time out, we looked at how we could create a styling extension, and the styling extension looked a little bit like this, with an Oracle Policy Automation ad extension with a style marker here, and then uh, JavaScript objects, essentially, to describe uh, the styling of calendar input, and referencing a class name, this so CSS class was simply referenced in a mystyle.css, which was bundled into the resource folder as well as my custom JavaScript extension. And we saw yesterday that we could easily transform the look and feel of our interview. Today we're going to look at something slightly different, which is we're going to use the same ad extension API, and we're going to customize the behavior of a label, or any labels for that matter, in our interview. So I've added a new label. It is not a custom control, so we're not using the custom control concept that existed in previous versions. We are going to override the behavior of this uh, label by adding our own extension. The extension is, once again, a JavaScript file. And I'll pull that up now. Uh, there we have it. And in this case, as you can see, I have custom label as my heading. And if you take a dig into the documentation, you will find that you have a number of options for enabling you to implement custom rendering of controls. So I've chosen a custom label, which applies to label, and is used to render labels in an interview. So this would apply to all the labels in an interview, uh, unless I chose to write some JavaScript, which in one way or another uh, modified its behavior. For example, uh, just while we're here, it is interesting and useful to note that we now have, through the API, functionality such as the ability to get a caption, get a property, get a data type, uh, get a control type, or even, indeed, for that matter, get or set the value of the control through the JavaScript API. Anyway, now that we have a brief idea of what I'm going to do, let's take a short look at the code. So, there are essentially, in this example, three handlers. The mount handler is responsible for injecting our custom label into the document object model when the document object model is being crafted for whatever page you're looking at. So in my case, uh, it is essentially the first handler that's going to be called, and I'm going to create two, ambulance, uh, two elements. I'm going to populate one of the elements by giving it an ID, uh, plugging in the source because it's an image, as you can see here, setting the attribute uh, called title, and then appending my image to an empty div, and then appending the div to this EL object. This is the parent element, which is passed in courtesy of the API. So all I've got to do is take my custom content, in this case, and append it to the parent object. There is also an update handler, which, according to the documentation, is fired whenever anything is updated. And we'll see that that is quite true in just a moment. And then we have the unmount handler, which is used where is called when the document object model is essentially being dismantled. For example, uh, we are now um, the the page state is now closed, and we are moving on to the next page. There is in fact a fourth handler called the validate handler, which is responsible for, or rather, which is used to signal whether you have validated the content of a control and whether you wish to permit the user to navigate to the next page. Uh, obviously, with a label, because there's nothing for the user to enter, uh, I'm not going to use a validate handler. Now that we have this in place, just to remind you, this JavaScript file is going to be dropped into the Resources folder. There it is. You can see it right there. Interview Theme Resources. So it will automatically be loaded. And I'm going to go to my project, and I'm going to click Debug. And we'll see how my new label is rendered using my custom renderer. I'll reset all of this. So we can see that uh, in place of the label, we now have some text, which was the inner HTML attribute, followed by an image, which is obviously the IMG tag that we inserted. 
And you'll notice that the title attribute already says an update has occurred. So the update handler has already been fired, even though I'm, I'm right here on the page. And I'm going to add some information. Since most of this is required, $10, and click my next button. And we'll see the equivalent of a hello world, uh, because in my unmount handler, all I put was a JavaScript window alert to signal that the handler had been called, at which point we move on to the next page. So what is exciting about this, evidently, is the fact that I can now create a label and other control extensions in an organized and structured way using a documented API, using JavaScript objects, and how I can combine those with my styling extensions so I can produce single files for, uh, to adapt to the behavior of my interview in a uh, much more, frankly, much more streamlined way than with the old custom controls. So that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short video, and I'm glad you got to meet Pumpkin, my cat. And I look forward to speaking to you again in part four of this video series. Bye-bye.